This is the story of restoring St. Thomas Aquinas. From his place of honor at a Southern Ontario high school, Thomas had better days. Arriving at our workshop, his head had the most damage, and with the tape removed, it looked even worse. There was also damage to his wrist and sleeve, and many breaks and chips and cracks. We worked fairly extensively from photographs of the St. Thomas Aquinas statue before it was damaged. Unfortunately, by the time it arrived at our workshop, it was pretty badly damaged, particularly the head area. As you can see here, we ended up having to decapitate the statue in order to be able to have access to the back and inside of the facial structure and the head. So the first stages involve using an epoxy, you can still see some of the residue here, to hold the many pieces together and to ensure that we did not distort the shape and size of his head and his face. On the inside, you can see some pieces of plaster cloth which when dipped in water, harden and become very much like a cast you might have if you've broken your arm or ankle. So once we put it on the inside of the head, it firms up and hardens, and then it gives us a good firm structure to work with. Well, on the front, this entire area of the eye and forehead was missing, so we ended up removing the other eye as well, creating a single match to make sure that everything was the same size, rebuilt part of his head, and so on. Once we are able to get to that stage, we will be putting the back of his head back on as well. And it's a rough fit here, but you get the idea that what will happen is this section here that is missing, we will plaster with the cloth on the inside and then build up layers of plaster in order to create a full and properly shaped head. From there, meticulous hand sanding and smoothing, especially around the eyes and forehead, then base coating skin tone, re-sculpting his missing hair and crown. We also recast his broken finger and wrist, sleeve and garment. There were stress cracks to deal with along the body and his broken Summa Theologica. The next stage was to reattach the restored head with its preliminary painting and colors now completed by Pauline. Then back into natural lighting for her final artistic touches, painting the tonsure, which is a traditional monk's haircut, giving him realistic skin tones, eyes and lips, making his hands and nails realistic as well. Next came applying the gold trim along all of his garments, his restored book, and all the fine artistic finishes. The last stage was application of the final protective lacquer. The once shattered St. Thomas Aquinas statue was now back in one piece, transformed, restored, and looking forward to his journey back to school where he would once again keep watch over his students.